Josh Jones, you are the first repeat offender here on the Bilge Podcast. And uh, so you know the drill. We like to hang out. We like to talk crap, uh, talk about various things that's going on uh, currently. And you just drove, what, five hours from Oklahoma? Yeah, four. Four hours? That's not too bad. No. We both had early mornings this morning. I had a cement pour in the backyard here. And once again, we're set up in the kind of the upstairs here. So again, um, the Battleborn rig is, we gutted it, grabbed all the equipment, and we're just shooting up here at the house, kind of in the off season. So, and I'm glad Trey reached out and got you over here again. It's uh, it, it, a lot of topics have arose since the last time we talked. It's been interesting. And I, yeah, and I figured you're the man to talk to. And look, I mean, it's been just, this horse has just been like killed and then dead and then killed again and then deader. And uh, like the forward face and sonar stuff is is definitely your expertise. I think the last time we had you on the on the show, we were we had the RV set up at OHIV. I think that week you probably caught what uh, a big fit a, a ten pound plus fish every single day. You were there that week, right? I what are the remember. stats for this year? Do you remember? Uh, eighty four like, double digits. Eighty four double digits in twenty twenty three. And uh, I fished. I haven't fished more than ninety days. That's insane. And you got 75,000 miles on your Dodge Ram. Yeah, about to be 80 after this next trip up north. That's definitely more miles. Does it, does it get old catching the bi- as many big <clears throat> fish as you have? Uh, it sounds weird. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. But watching someone else do it, that's what, what keeps right. me motivated. That's the juice. That's what keeps me going. You know, right. after, I don't know the number. I think I'm at 184 now, actually, double digits. Total. For me. That so is insane. after And that's you personally, yeah. what you've caught. Uh, that's the boat but, yeah. on my boat. So yeah. even if you've guided someone, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. I'm including that too. Yep. Um, so here's the stat that everyone wants to know. So out of 184, how many do you think were caught outside of the beam? Like not looking at the screen. Yeah. Probably ten. 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 I was gonna say ten of them. Probably ten. That's insane. Not dude. many. So you well, were probably more than that. Yeah. Um. 2022, the summer, we were throwing big swim baits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caught, Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. We caught a lot of big... Old school bass. blind casting, mm-hmm. the stuff I graph used to... off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, I've been crappie fishing the last week, catching tons, graph off. Really? That's why I've been so addicted to it. Yeah. You know, I've been spending $100 a day in fuel, just getting to the lake and going fishing. You made the comment to me, uh, we were on the phone, uh, what, last week, when Trait was kind of setting this up, and you were coming down here, and... Uh, you know, I asked you, and I was like, "Ah, save it for the podcast because I want everyone to hear this." Right? It's like, um, you know, what w- what is the state of forward fishing sonar right now with like the professionals? Okay, so guiding is completely different, uh, crappie fishing different, <clears throat> but like this professional bass fishing thing, like it seems like everything has come to a head because, and I told you this on the phone, it's like, dude, BS BASS is legitimately thinking about banning this thing like legit like legitimate i got the phone call a couple other guys got the phone call they wanted to survey some of the veteran i'm a veteran now some of the veterans on wow what should we do and they're literally considering it and i mean I, it's kind of weird me talking about it because i am who i am yeah. today because of ford face and sonar so i hate to be negative towards it i mean without that i don't even have a job right now right i love it it's great I'm going to always use the next yep. best thing that comes out for myself, for my clients, yep. whatever. But from my standpoint, coming from the crappie world, I mean, it took really, there were some amazing fishermen out there. There was amazing fishermen that had their own home lakes. Yeah, I would show up, wake up late, not hardly pre-fish at all, go out there and beat them. <laughs> Literally, and these just, guys are the guys with 10 years, 15, 20 years of experience yeah. studying maps, going to the high spots. I, Found I found a tree on down, uh, you know, 2D sonar that I keep on going to and going to and going yeah, to. And you're mean, beating it, these guys. There, there was a team. They won that uh, eight or nine national championships, and that was like my main deal. Is I want to beat them. I want to beat them. Yeah, and I yeah, went yeah, in. Yeah. I was nervous. Sure. I didn't want to embarrass myself, dude. I would just beat them every time by three, four, five pounds. Just wake up and go. Not scope. even have any knowledge on nothing. I would literally show up put my screen in the water and go out there and catch them that I never did any really Google search. I, I didn't do much. I was the guy who woke up late and came in early. That is awesome. Free fishing. And I would still, I mean, I won several national Germans. events because I was good at looking at the screen. So do you watch a lot of Bass Life? I used to. Yeah. I, I used to watch it a lot. I don't really anymore. Now I just 
<clears throat> catch myself critiquing everyone. Right. Like, right. what are you doing? You know, don't take your foot off the pedal. Right. Like that. I'm right. Like, Man, these guys don't know what they're doing. Right and we now. learned that last time you saying uh, the <clears throat> so, biggest thing is keeping your foot on the pedal. But now I, I just, I personally, I love it. I love the sonar. Um, I don't like watching it. I don't like, I like watching you or my buddies when we get on the it's boat. because you know the guys, right? Yeah, yeah, but not like... So the guys who um, have... So I think like six or seven of the nine elites this <clears> year <throat> were one on board-facing sonar. Even like the shallow water power ones like Seminole and Florida and stuff like that. And there's a lot of new names, like guys who hadn't won before this technology came out. And now they're like all of a sudden top 10 in AOI and stuff. When you watch that as someone who is really good at what you do with that technology, do you hold them in the same respect as um, other elite fishermen mm -hmm. that have won in the past? It's or? different because there is a technique to forward facing sonar. There's a skill. Right. Not everyone's good at it. You know, not everyone's caught 184 double digits, you know. Um, <clears throat> it's its its own special technique and skill and it is you know especially the first couple of years it comes out it's so much fun yeah yeah i mean it's different yeah but after a while i'm to the point now it's getting kind of old and you it's know? dominating the it's dominating i'm seeing these 10 11 12 pound fish i don't even care yeah. i think now it's more impressive a dude going out throwing a big swim bait catching a 10 pounder than someone catching a 50 pound stringer on ford face and sonar myself though like I'm still loving it because my clients are the ones. Yeah, you, you know. Get that so sense. there's yeah. still a new experience. But if it was just you, yeah, I, I'm not. Boat. I'm not going out fun fishing much anymore. You know, I've only fished what 90 days all year. Yeah. For bass. Right. All that, that's still a lot. Yeah. But looking at years past, I would fish 320. Right. Um. So with the question of should it be banned on the elites, if you were Chase Anderson and with all your knowledge of board facing sonar and you have watched the sport, you do watch Bass Live, you understand fishing at a high level, do you <sighs> think that it's their job to, to ban it as a leader or to keep it and allow the fisheries and the state the state uh, wildlife departments to make those decisions. I think banning is kind of a harsh word. Mm -hmm. right. Ban, I don't like the name ban. You know, Banning in a tournament. So yeah, I so I, I don't like the idea of there being every tournament one with it because that is going to eliminate the old school natural fishermen from the Fun old days. Watch, the yeah. actual good fisherman yeah Intuition. yeah van damme wa yeah. watched his side scan and yeah, you can yeah. make all those arguments they yeah. were catching them on 2d but yeah you still this have, is different yes you still have to have intuition yes. you it t but now it takes intuition out right all you got to do is go put your trolling motor down and scan around until you find one then you throw at it as long as you present your bait fine yep. and you're going to catch that fish i i like the idea of drawing out of a hat let's allow it in four events yeah and not allow it in four yeah. events and let the full body of that angler's work determine. Right. He might not be the best forward facing sonar guy, but as long you know, it's going to even the field a lot sure. better. What if you just allowed it in like smallmouth tournaments and maybe, maybe an offshore tournament? But see, I think or... watching it with the smallmouth tournaments is the most right. boring thing there is. Yeah. Right. And I understand they watched the two D back in the day. Right. Yeah. But different. Do you ban it in certain seasons or literally just um, specific tournaments? I, I just don't like it in tournaments at all. Right. Now now you got people literally only using Ford Face and Sonar. Yeah. 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 No intuition. Yeah. They were saying You can argue there's no skill. I can argue there's look what I've done. So right. right. I can one hundred percent admit I wouldn't have done what I what I did. If I wasn't good at Ford Face and Sonar. Dude, when I... Okay, first question is, um, were you good at geometry in school? No. Did you I, ever take geometry? I did. I actually failed. Did you really? Yeah, 100%. Okay, what, do you know why I'm asking this grade. question? Geometry? What? So geometry is all angles, right? Mm -hmm. Angles and lines and triangles. Uh, was it obtuse <clears throat> or obtruse and acute angles? So that's all it is. And the pivot point is that trolling motor, and it's all angles. So when you see that 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 10 11 pounder on OHIV on the screen, you know, you're just moving your foot and just it's all angles 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 and you just kind of know where to cast. 
you're probably a good shot. If you're not good at geometry, you're probably a good shooter. I mean, there's a skill. Yes. And, man, I love doing it. Mm -hmm. I love the technology. But in a tournament setting, I don't think the tournament should be fully based on who's best at reading the screen. Yeah. Right. That's it's, all. It's kind of weird, right? Like, if you got a good swim bait guy, he's usually not dominant in all nine tournaments. Or if you got a good, you know, some guy who fishes, you know, in a... Square bill or flipper, right? Yeah. Yeah, they don't necessarily dominate all year, but we... I think this year saw that yeah. if you're good at this, you can dominate yep. every tournament. So now it is like a, okay, what's going on here? So you were talking about earlier that it takes out that intuition and that it's not like side imaging. So I see that in the comments a lot. Like if you're going to ban this, then you got to ban sign imaging and down imaging and all that. Why is it different? This is real time. I can throw out a fish, present it perfectly three inches from his head he doesn't eat set it down go present another bait perfectly mm -hmm. he doesn't eat i can do that with three four five different baits the side imaging once you side image okay i see a brush pile i see 10 fish over here let's mark it swing back and then blind and blindly cast to, cast to that use your area. intuition okay and that's what it's, kevin did for so long it's hard enough yeah. to mark a spot and then go cast to that spot. yeah it's hard yeah but now you, you put the troll motor down, you scan it. Okay, I need to throw right there. And ultimately, I I hate even talking about it because I love my active target. Yeah. Dude, it's yeah. like, I love it. Yeah. But there's going to be a time where it's going to hurt fisheries, especially in these summer tournaments. I've never seen so many dead big bass in my entire life this year on social media. Mm. People are getting better with it. Yep. They're catching bigger fish. They're throwing them in the live well yep. when there shouldn't be tournaments. Right. In the middle of summer yep. in the south. Yep. You got mid 80s to high 80s, 90 degree water. These fish aren't going to survive. And if they do, they're going to get fungus and all kinds of infections three, four days later, and they're going to die a week later or whatever. I mean, more people are catching bigger bass than ever before. Yeah. And it's going to affect. I mean, look, Populations. There's, you can't go to the lake on a weekend and not see 100 boats around yep. here in Texas, man. Same goes true. Same is true for okay. So when we first went to the St. Lawrence River, um, yes, they've had like the Canadian Open and things like that up there, big tournaments in the summertime. But I think when we first got there in twelve or thirteen or whatever it was, dude, we killed a lot of fish. Like I saw them. I saw them. That's when they called in Barbara Elliott to to help educate the guys on how to fizz them. So they go swim back down to that deep water. And I watched that video. Yes, because I, I had to learn, learn to it. do that. Yeah. And so we were doing that to those big smallmouth up there. So 2013, so it's 2023. That was a decade ago. A lot of anglers would argue that the numbers have gone down. So think about that. OHIV, some of the, you know, some of the West Texas lakes. Heck, even in Florida, they're catching them on, on forward facing sonar. So another 10 years from now, you know, what's the effect going to be? And we're all guilty of it. I've killed fish. Everyone's yeah. going to kill fish. But the more yeah. people that get good with it or the more fish that are going to yeah. die. So there could also be the argument, though, that, yes, y'all went up there and um, maybe did kill some fish, but then y'all opened up where the fish that were remaining got bigger. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Cause less, ask all ask all less, the guys out there. Ask the Johnsons. Ask, I mean, yes, they're, they're getting more educated because these are 10 year old fish the ones you got you catch out in west texas south texas those are all old fish yes they 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 become educated um but what what um and i was going to say earlier um what really shocked me most that when i went in your boat that week we filmed the last pillage podcast i hopped in your boat every single spot and i just i was sitting back just watching and learn i wanted to learn i was your client that day and I'm, the first thing I was like, oh, why don't you use Mega 360? Like, Mega 360 is the shit. Why don't you run it? He goes, and I, I don't need that. This is my 360. This is my scanning. I just use my foot, right? And it's right then, right there. So but the other thing, the, the, the thing that impressed me the most, every single spot you pulled up to, I looked at your map. The con I'm not, like, recording where you're at. And I, don't, I could care less. I want to know what type of spots you were pulling up to. And the contours were nothing, not a flats, just flats. There was no beautiful point. There was no drop off. There was no ledge. All the things for 13 years of professional bass fishing, you know, I said, hey, stay away from that. That looks like crap. You pulled up to it, scanned around, catching eight, nine, 10 pounders. That's what trips me out. It did open up a lot of fish that weren't previously, we weren't able to catch. Yeah. You know, obviously. Um, 
but I don't know. I'm I'm so torn with it because I'm yeah. always going to use it. Yeah. I hate to talk bad about it right. and then go out there and, and use profit, it, right? Yeah, and profit off profit, of it. Yeah. But but so, we're we're talking about a tournament, right? I don't think the basis of a professional tournament angler should be based on how what well you can read. Yeah. A Ford face and sonar screen. Personally. So what's the answer then? If Chase Anderson calls you and and his number, his right hand man calls you and says, "Hey, Josh Jones, we need your professional opinion on whether we should ban this or not." I mean, what's what, what because, do you say? Is it a, based on conservation? You're afraid of those implications. <clears throat> that too. Or as a fan watching both, yeah, you know, or, or conservation. as a fisherman that knows that the skill involves is not necessarily as so well rounded. It's all of it. So from a conservation standpoint, and I think bass has done well. Mm -hmm. Think major league fishing's done well. Mm -hmm. I think they're trying to do well, but the people watching it when they go do it on their own, they don't necessarily think about those. They things. don't think about that. But from a conservation standpoint, I was meeting with a state agency. <clears throat> not even gonna tell you what state it was uh -huh. because and they want to stay out of it they don't want to make anyone mad they don't want to piss anyone off sure but they told me straight up we've done numerous studies in between i forgot the months may and october 70 percent of every bass hauled into a weigh-in dies mm. like, in a tournament because it's just the stress it's the warm water so you take three fish tournaments five boat tournaments from may to october 70% of those fish are going to die. Summertime. And now they're way easier to catch and especially target the big ones. I, yeah. a lot, I've said it for years. I don't even, when I'm fishing by myself, I don't even cast out a fish unless I think it's 10. And that's the that's a big problem because you can head hunt like oh, yeah. just the trophies. Think, so, think yeah. about pulling a 15, 16 year old bass that's comfortably living in, in 18 to 22 feet of water where it's 10 degrees cooler or 8 degrees cooler or whatever it is. There's higher oxygen level. The pressure is different down there. You yank that 16 year old fish out of those depths, hang it out in the live well for, for hours at a time. I mean, dude, that fish is not comfortable. Dude, try doing that to a dog, taking him out of his environment and keeping him uncomfortable three, four, you know, three or four hours at a time. Little Nebo is going to die, but, you know? But, you know, me, I like to eat fish and we get five fish to take home with us. That's what the rules are. Yeah, so, sure. So, I mean. And it's a renewable resource. Right. I love to eat bass. Yeah. But I don't, it just doesn't, it, I don't. It doesn't sit well with me knowing that the Kevin Van Dam is the best angler yeah, of all time. Dude. And can't yep. compete with the right. guy Same looking here. at his screen. And so when people comment, "Well, that's their fault for not learning," and you you're behind with the times, what's your response to that <laughs> as an angler who it, knows what you're doing? It's it's like professional football because Emmett Smith was good in the '90s. Doesn't yeah. mean he's going to go out there and be good now. He can't compete with the younger guys. Yeah, he's right. not as agile. And you don't Doing think it's I, the technology? No, that, you got to be you coordinated. Think you right. got to make these perfect casts. It's you like do. hitting a baseball at 90 miles an you hour. Do. Not anyone's just going to get, you can swing a bat, but that doesn't mean you're going to hit the fish. You got to balance. Everything's happening. You got to cast. The fish is moving. I mean, it's so, a lot going on. So, in your opinion, forward facing sonar is a young man's game. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've taken enough clients. Yep. They're, and it's going to make anyone better. Right. It's going to make anyone, but no one's going to be like the young guys, like I, us, and even younger than us, the high schoolers coming out. So you just hit, yeah, you just really nailed that point home. Um, it, it does take skill, 1,000%. I see that argument a lot on social media. Oh, man. It takes skill. But the viewer, it's not because this technology is new and it's really just hitting the scene. It's getting real popular. It's not It's not that. It's. It's the fact that viewing this back of this guy's head looking down he's not talking and explaining what he's doing like you do as a guide that's the turnoff right there yes that guy is talented and yes like awesome you just caught that six pound smallmouth seven pound smallmouth dude that's awesome but teach us how to do it like show us how it was done at least voice how it's done and without that we're just gonna continue to shit on it and that's the thing money rules right yep. he's Tournament trails are going to get paid by some companies that yeah. might not be as good as the others. It needs to be probably an even playing field. If he's using a Garmin, show the Garmin. If he's using a Lowrance, yep. show the Lowrance. Right. We I had mean, that same conversation. And it's yeah. not fair to these companies to not be able to market this through a professional right. trail, which is why the word ban, I don't like the word ban. Yeah. Because right. I think it's cool technology. I yeah. think it's useful it's in a lot of It's not good for the sport. It's not yeah. good. Yeah. I don't want it banned every tournament. Yeah. As a fan, as a fisherman, 
I think there should be some tournaments that allow it. Half. And I think that would be fair enough to every fisherman. If it's allowed in half of them, you can be the best Ford Face and Sonar guy out there, but you still have to prove you're a good fisherman. You yeah, in the some, mud, in, up there in the dirt. Made yeah, that even it together. Yeah. The Japanese guy, what's his name? Koryo? Yeah. Um, someone made the comment they had fish with him and he does not know how to fi- flip docks or f- he doesn't do anything but forward facing sonar. And what was the in AOI? Something crazy. I mean, the first, I think, uh, Seminole and Murray or something, he was like, Second, twice, or second and third. Seminole, he was flipping docks for like the very first time, but he was doing it with his forward yeah. facing. Like he was, yes. yeah. Um, so I do have a question before, because I want to talk about the business stuff too, but someone made the comment, I think, I think it was Matt Heron to us, but, um, and it kind of stuck with me a little bit. He said, a kid graduating high school should not be able to come out and compete with a guy who's fished for 20 years wow. and has 20 years of experience, Oof. but now they can. I don't agree with that necessarily. Right. Mm-hmm. right. You know, it's all about I like the... to think I was pretty good when I was coming out of high school too. Yeah. That's what I did my whole entire life. Sure. You know, I'm not saying I could have competed with. Yeah. But he's saying you know, that but... with forward facing sonar, now they can. Absolutely. Yeah. And he thinks that that's not right. That hurts. Do you, that do hurts. Do you agree Man, with that? I'm... I don't, I mean, that's why that let's, is... let's allow it in half and not right. allow it in half and let's see where they end up. Yeah. Right. Because right. they still have to prove in this half right. that they're good enough. But to me, if you're saying we should ban it in half of them, you're admitting that maybe there's an issue with it's it. It's a significant advantage being a young person and using word face and sonar. Savvy, like significant said. difference. Yeah. There's kids now guiding in West Texas that ain't never fished these lakes before, and they're catching just as big as bass as I am. There are. I've been using this technology for eight years, and I've been guiding in west texas for three right that little community out there dude I'm like you started you, they a came thing. out of nowhere you started a thing out there and now dude. they're catching giants you know so, think about if everyone does that we talked about kind of the big picture like looking outside looking in at this whole thing let's talk about on the water so i've got several examples that happened this year especially like at champlain and these other fisheries up there for smallmouth how about the guy that rolls up l- legit 50 feet from you and is looking at the same fish as you at four faces. So head down, doesn't even say hi, hello. He's got the hood on, you know, whether he's got a guide or a, a client and he's trying to get his fish on the same fish, the same brush pile, whatever it is. Like it brings out assholes. It really does. It, I mean, right? I mean, how many people have done that? Like Quite to a you? Bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. And here's something else with it is. And I sound salty towards it. That's all right. I That's love not, it. Yeah, like, the bill just salty. I can't dude. wait to go fishing tomorrow with it, yeah. with my Laurent, man. Yeah. I, I've been counting down this day. Yeah. But now you see a guy over there. He's on a hump, whatever. Now someone can see that person yep. and go right behind him when he leaves and if find exactly fish. what he was doing. Yep. Yeah. Just like crappie. That's right. what really turned me off the crappie tournaments. You would find a little special something whether it's a little stump field or brush pile or whatever, which used to be kind of hard to find. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You go, you you catch your tournament fish, whatever, you leave. The next day, there's three guys on it or whatever. There's no skill now in actually necessarily finding these spots. Now there's so many people just following each other, mm-hmm. and it's a thousand times easier to locate these do fish you, with what, what you got. Do you think it's going to cycle, though? Like when you see in the past when you've seen a bait or or a technique – dominant yeah it has its couple of years like the chatterbait or whatever but then it like evens out does forward facing sonar fall into that technique category and does it level out where yes it plays but now other things play or is it this that, is it yeah i can catch fish in florida i did catch fish in you florida. did you sent me pictures in shallow water mm-hmm. in hydrilla using forward facing sonar like the better people get the more they're going to catch. It's just, it's not stopping, which is great. I'm going to always use it. I'm going to clarify. I'm going to always use it, but it's cool now because mm-hmm. there's, the pros are good with it and a few it, people are good with it, but wait till thousands and thousands everyone. and thousands of people That's are good scary. with it. Then there's going to be a conservation issue. Oh yeah. The states are going to have to figure it out. The tournament trails are going to have to figure it out. These tournament trails right now, they're they're having tournaments every weekend, right? You know, in the middle of summer. Yep. So the F- uh, Koya Fujita, uh, I assume this is correct. He's got five trans five live scope transducers, 
rigged on his boat in some capacity. I think there's some on the back and where you can hard aisle with them. So should that be limited? Hey, I'm fine with that because you can only look at one at a time. Right, right. He can have 20, but he can only look at one. I only need one. But he can hard idle apparently with uh with his but see he is that and props to him for figuring it out right right, right. that's cool right like, right he think was about the first it. to do it like, he's going cool. to a different country to compete against all the greatest american names he's going to use every piece of technology possible look imagine us going to japan and competing over there we're going to find every little thing right. possible and we hear he's like super super secretive we'd be the same way yeah and props to anyone that's figured it out yeah who's making a living doing it and yeah. that's Winning that's tournaments it doing it. I mean, that's what so, you've got to do because so that's in the, within the rules. You don't think they should limit how much technology you have on your boat. It should either be a, that tournament you can use it and all is fair or that tournament you can't use it. So uh, probably four tournaments you can't have it on your boat, four tournaments you can. Mm-hmm. Or four tournaments you got to turn it off, Yeah, whatever. Because yeah. it's going to be a hassle. Unhooking, Policing and all that stuff. Yeah. Turn it off, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm different. I've been using this for eight years. I started with the crappie trail when there was no technology and I was the only one using it. And I was with the crappie trail when everyone was good using it. Yeah. And now no one was using it in the bass trail until what, three years ago when Patrick Walters won that late yep. tournament. Yep. That was pretty much the first yep. real national exposure it got. Wasn't that Patrick Walters? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think Christy may have had like an early pan optics but he, win. He but he wasn't, wasn't like targeting. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he kind of saw him out there. Yeah. On, yeah. But this was, and Walters was the only one doing it, and yep. he absolutely demolished yep. the field. Especially this this time of year, that late summer, early fall, like you're not going to beat it. Like So I've know. seen it all, and I see the direction it's going, and I don't have a problem with it, you know, at ivy or anywhere else yeah. i have no problem with it i do think there will be a, a point where we're gonna have to start figuring out the conservation portion and of it but at the top of the conservation are the the professional trails i think sure. they you should know, be leaders if if you know bass is and it, this goes for ford face and sonar or not if there's a summer tournament and the water temps are 85 degrees and they're sure. keeping five bass in their live well you know Billy down at Ivy is going to keep four bass in his live well for that glory shot at the end yeah. of the day, not they're... realizing that these fish, they're developing fungus and stress and sickness after these fish are released. And that's coming from the biologist. I know I'm not yeah. one, but, and, and these guys don't want any drama, the biologists at this state yeah. agency, they just want to stay out of it. They're making a ton of money. These tournaments are making money. Fishermen are making money. Everyone's making money, but at some point, Yep, we're gonna hurt the resource. Yeah, and that comes down to we can catch bigger fish than we've ever caught before. Just look at me. Y- yeah, you know what's unfortunate is is in order to uh, implement these conservation efforts in this new way, this forward facing way, you have to record data first, right? And gather the data. We're in the gathering the data years right now. You're doing it. We're, the tournament organizations are doing it. It's like kind of hold on and then make those adjustments. So at what point? Do these guys say, hey, look, we well, need to start looking at I this? I got a question. So you say you have problems during that May to, what is it, October? <clears throat> and that's months? coming from a biologist, not right. me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you still catch fish during those months? I do, it? but if I put them in a live well, it's for two minutes to get my phone ready to take a picture. Right. I'm guilty of putting four and five in a live well when the water sure. temps are in the 60s, even though I probably shouldn't. But right. you I know, mean, your dude just caught a fish of a lifetime. I mean, you got to. Do you, yeah. do you feel any guilt um, on like show like being someone that like the general public looks at and says, I want to go do that? And then like, do you feel like you get the message out that the resource needs to be better taken care of? I or? don't. I don't. Um, every time I kind of do, you know, I get a lot of kickback and heat and stuff. Right. But I love people going out and catching fish. Right. I, board face and sonar, man. It's great. Right. There's nothing better than taking someone yeah teaching them something and they right. go do it you know they've been fishing their whole life for a 10 pounder i teach them what to do and they catch one you know right. that's great so out of the 80 to 90 guide trips a year is that is that about right 80 to 90 a year guide trips yeah. probably close to 50. that 50 yeah so 50, 50 60 guide trips a year um what percentage of those those clients are like i do not want to do this today 
the four facing thing. Oh no, none, none of them. They, they, they know what they're getting. They don't sign up. For I was gonna say they know what they're getting. And it's like I said, it's great. I love it. I love the sonar. I love them catching so, big bass. I like I like Texas. back I like back in the spring when uh, I had my boat in the water. You had your boat in the water. You had clients, and I had Johnny, the camera guy. And Johnny had just caught a thirteen pounder on a glide bait. And with your clients, you came up and you're like, "This is dumb. I want to catch a thirteen pounder on a glide bait." Like, and that's old school fishing. Old school. And I don't know if your clients felt the same way or not, but do I mean, you, do you feel like? Um, OHIV would have the resurgence that it's had without forward facing sonar? Yeah, I mean, back in what? So there was a tournament in like the year 2000. It was a big bass tournament. And I think 49 out of the 50 bass were double digits. Oh, yeah. They ca- they've always caught them they've big. Always, but I, I still think but you do would you catch think, them. Yeah, do you think they would still have such a drastic economic impact? No. no. Impact? Milliken wouldn't have went down there. I wouldn't have went down there. Right. It would yeah. have just kind of been what it is. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it. There's so that's why it's not fair to these companies because they have benefited a lot of us, yeah, and it wouldn't right. be fair for us to benefit off them and then not be allowed to right. use this technology that they developed and spent millions do, of dollars. Do it's, you have because you're close with Six Sense, right? Mm-hmm. Do y'all have those conversations on like when it comes to designing baits that it needs to be a bait that that plays with forward facing sonar? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, baits that you can see easier and more realistic baits. Yeah, Fish are getting harder to catch. I, I talked to several um, tackle companies, um, some of the biggest ones, and they said all of their design shifting and the ones who um, only have hard baits that they've taken a significant hit during like the pre-spawn months especially. They're, they're really not selling as many hard baits and because they don't offer soft baits, they're not, you know, getting to experience the forward facing stuff as much. And then I, I talked with a couple of retailers and one made a very good point. And he said, um, he said that we're obviously selling a lot more soft plastics. Mm-hmm. And he said, and over wire baits and hard baits. And he said, you know, cells are the same, but the wired baits and the hard baits have a better margin. So when a guy say on Bass Live wins with, a wire bait or a hard bait, they make a lot more money. But when he wins with forward facing sonar, bag they don't, of worms, they don't, bag of plastic. Yeah, they don't get that big boost. Yeah, and mop. from my standpoint, I throwing a spinner bait used to be my favorite thing to do. Yeah, throwing Oklahoma. a challah. Uh huh. I haven't thrown a spinner bait since forward facing sonar <laughs> I bet, came out, dude. <laughs> because it's just not a forward facing type. Think bait. about that. So, how many spinner baits has the fishing industry sold since it came out? Not very many. And it's going to keep going yeah. down. Yeah. Yep. Let me ask you this. So. You know, you think about um, you think about radar, right? Military uses radar. That F thirty five they just lost in South Carolina. It was designed to dodge radar. So, have you seen um, materials such as tungsten or lead or the you know hardness of a plastic give you a better return on forward facing sonar? And the reason why I'm asking is because my dangerous swim bait, I designed it to look like an F twenty two Raptor, and I'm thinking maybe that the, 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 the <laughs> it doesn't show up on. On forward facing, but I know it does. I mean, it, it does, but I haven't seen a significant change. No, yeah. I mean, you can see it out. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. So, well, because would... like some guys are trying to use that as a marketing tool. Th- you know, this is the sonar minnow X or whatever it is, right? And you can it's... see it better on forward facing. I don't know. No, I'm gonna see it. What you know, I'm throwing one eighth ounce proper right. jigs out there, right. seeing it. Right, right. Um. One of the things that at the last couple of tournaments, the older guys were saying where viewership was down and you brought that up. It's not fun to watch. I went back and went through the numbers and I guess viewership really isn't down. Uh, but that's what we were being told. By. That was the argument. A lot yeah, of old that's timers what people were, were arguing saying. That, yeah. But you feel like it's boring to watch. But I would say, yes, it dominated on the winner spot, but it seemed like there were other people doing other things still on Bass Live outside of um, the smallmouth tournaments. But do you think it will slowly be where that top 10 is completely full of forward-facing sonar guys? Or do you think that... I, and Yeah, I don't know the data. But going forward, I feel like the top 10 is going to definitely get younger and younger yeah. and younger. It's definitely done that this year. And that's like, the, look at the opens. Yeah. Dude, I mean. that's the cool thing about fishing, though. A right. 70-year-old Rick Klon can go out there... He won a tournament, what, three years ago? Yeah. And compete. Mm-hmm. He's won two in the last, you know, ten yeah. years, yeah. eight years. He, 
absolutely cannot compete the way it is right now. I know. He just completely it's crazy threw out a whole group of people, even people wanting to come fish Wait. the opens. I don't think that it should be like a bunch of 20 to 30 year olds fishing the opens. I think. Do you think that that's a legitimate concern? Like that's yeah. what's going to happen? Like absolutely. bass is going to lose people signing up for tournaments that that don't play that just game. like the I crappie agree. game i think so I think there, too. there used to be 250 boat crappie tournaments all ages the whole spectrum yeah of age groups yeah. and there'd be 75 year olds there'd be kids out there yep. and now yep. they know they can't compete yep. they know they don't have the movement and the that's the word i'm looking for ability yeah to to do it and they don't even enter that's going to happen with that's bass crazy. but luckily there's a so many coming up through the high school ranks and college. I don't think it's ever really going to be an issue. Yeah. I'm sure they got record attendance now. But I I just don't like the idea of Kevin Van Dam retiring yeah. because he can't compete with something. And that's yeah. exactly what happened. What happened? <laughs> yeah. And that's going to happen with a lot of people. And that's yeah. going to happen with hundreds of tournament anglers throughout the country. Yeah. Fishing a local tournament or fishing whatever. Because they can't compete and they're not going to go donate their money. And I, from my standpoint, I don't like the idea of someone being a professional fisherman because they're good at reading a forward face and sonar screen. That's Period. the only thing I got. If they do four tournaments, forward facing, four tournaments not, and whoever wins might be a young kid, great. Yeah. Right. But I can guarantee you, almost guarantee, those guys that are dominating with forward face and sonar aren't going to dominate up shallow, and I can almost guarantee oh, yeah. yeah, zero intuition, yeah. right? Yeah. So, including myself, right. Right. I like to think I'm pretty good. Yeah. But I'm not going to go up shallow <laughs> with whoever and, and beat them. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. But like going out deep, same deal. They're not going to beat me out deep. No. Which I don't think I should be able to go to the tournament trail and dominate because I'm good at looking at a screen. I'm good at looking at a screen. I love looking at it. I love catching big bass. I love people catching big bass. But I'm also not in the tournament scene. Yeah. I just don't like the idea of it. It's the same thing in the guide world, the guide world and the tournament uh, tournament scene. It, I mean, it's it's the exact same thing. There's competition in the same way that we deal with it over here. That's why it's been such a hot topic, you know. And and uh, you know, I, I wouldn't I definitely wouldn't want to be in Chase's shoes or whoever the MLF guy is making decisions. I know they're absolutely considering it, but that's not a decision I would want to make. But again, we try to put ourselves in their shoes and what's best for the overall sport. You got to, you know, you're thinking about your anglers who are barking, bah, 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 ban this, ban this. Dude, a month ago when we concluded the St. Lawrence River tournament, my phone blew up with guys wanting it gone. Some of the hardcore sponsored guys, sponsored by X brand, uh, who rely on it, who made forty, fifty thousand dollars this year because of it say hey we you know we got to cut it out so you know bass as an organization is thinking about their anglers who are their customers who are the people who uh are in the spotlight and showcase this stuff they got to think about them they got to think about sponsors where that money's coming in so, um yeah and then the fans so you the know? sponsors we're looking at millions of dollars like i yep. uh, from what i understand the electronics company they might not spend a lot on their anglers, but they definitely spend a lot with the organization. So how, you know, that's a big question. Is Bass weighing the long-term effects, you know, over the short-term check? You know, like, do we does the rest of the industry, the tackle industry, whatever, take a hit? Or do we all just pivot together? I was talking to um, some line companies this week, and they were saying, you know, light braid is definitely selling you know smaller braid is definitely what's selling right now and um and they make less money off of that right so we're and i would assume a lot of the items just like wired baits all that like that's hitting everyone everyone's shifting if that's the case then our industry is making less money so maybe the short-term check that's good from the electronics company is great but if the rest of the company stops spending with bass because they're not making as much money, then then is it, it worth that short term check or, you know, it's it's a, a tough <clears throat> conversation. But if viewership isn't really being affected and that's what I'm hearing is yet. it's not yet. yet. I know for me it is. I'm not watching it 
Yep. You get bored watching Me, it, and it's bored. what Same. you do. Because people get so dialed in, they yep. don't talk, they don't yep. do nothing, and yep. we don't know what they're looking at. Exactly. We're literally watching the dude's back look yep. down. Yeah. But, but I he's feel not like... casting. Yeah. Most of the time, he's not even casting. So right. you're just sitting there watching a guy troll around. I think they watch too many Josh Jones YouTube videos. Yeah, and I'm dude. guilty of yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I know. I think it needs to they... be fair to everyone, though. Yeah. Right. Me, if I was running it, I'm not. I'm nobody. I just fish. I would allow it in half of the events. I would not allow it in half of the events. That's fair to the guys that are good with it because they can still, if they're good with it, then go prove that they're good up shallow too. Right. That would be fair to the older guys because you might not have to do well in the forward facing events because mm-hmm. you can still catch them without it. Right. It would be fair to the electronics companies. Right. So it's know, weird, but yeah. that's if I was running it, I would just draw out of a hat. And well, then, I think like you have to have them in the smallmouth tournaments just because those are boring anyways to watch. So I don't think it affects them as much. If anything, it maybe helps them because the bags are bigger. Yeah. So at least you can you can market that. It right? definitely helps the tourism department. Right. Yeah, for sure. But then one of the conversations was like on Champlain, there were some guys who were fishing the old school way who were catching what in any other Champlain tournament was a phenomenal bag like a great bag but this year because people are out in the abyss catching giant smallies like not even cashing a check like and it's cool watching it right now but in 10 years it's no just gonna be another tournament it's not gonna be cool anymore i'm just like it's not cool anymore for me to go catch a 10 pounder i just finished my 12th season on tour and i remember like for the first eight ten turn eight ten years if I didn't make a cut, I was glued to Bass Live. Like, I love watching the guys. I love watching how they're doing things, learning a little bit. Now, I rarely watch Bass Live because I know exactly what's I, – I know. I know the drill, especially after fishing with you. But let's switch gears a little bit. Wait, that, that, that dead wait, ho- No, you, you just – you said something that triggered something. So when the split happened, Bass kept that core audience, and that was what everyone was saying behind the scenes. Um, companies that were spending were like – Bass has the core audience. They stood with them. So if the core audience, which is the fishermen like you guys, right, that are fish heads that know what they're doing, are stopping, no longer watching, not interested because it doesn't, mm-hmm. it's not as pure. I see right? a lot of comments like that, sure. But then we gain that that audience that MLF went to go get, mm-hmm. that new audience. Mm-hmm. Does it balance out or, you know? Time will tell. <laughs> I think being proactive is hard for an organization, yeah. a state, anything. And there's been no one being proactive about any of it. I've seen lakes completely destroyed from Ford Face and Sonar in the crappie world. Completely destroyed. And it took a lake being destroyed for people to figure out, wow, we destroyed it. We need to do better. I don't I don't want it to get to that point and these tournament organizations are getting the most views people are watching what they do they're basing what they do off what they do and i i don't do you think the state organization is is thinking about changing the 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 bag sizes or something i mean it's all about money though They're, they're making too much money everyone's making more money including myself but isn't their job to manage it so long term if there's no fishery then what are they gonna do they're gonna manage it once they start seeing an effect Right. But how do you... When do you know when that... You they, they, we're logging are, the data right now. They've already seen effects, I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. You know. But when's it too late? I mean, and that they didn't just see effects of this. They've probably seen effects of other lakes in the past. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Falcon, Toledo, Ben. Oh, right, right. Former number ones that yeah. are now... Former number ones. Toledo's coming back. Yeah. But the fishing pressure definitely had an effect on it. Yeah. Y'all, I can't, be the talk, fishing. y'all can't talk Toledo. Yeah, no. I be definitely fishing pressure... Yeah. Has affected it because of Ford Face and Sonar. Right. Because we're targeting all these fish that weren't, hey, I'm going to use it tomorrow. I hate complaining about it. Yeah. I'm using it. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm going to put a client on 10 pounders. Yeah. More. But as far as tournaments go and whether you should be a professional, you got there not looking at it. Yeah. I mean, you're a better fisherman than I am. I'm better than you with the screen. Absolutely. Does that make me a better fisherman that's, than you? Like, yeah, have that's you, where we're at. As I'm a sport right looking now. at the screen better. Yeah. Have you paid any attention to the opens this year? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> so there's a little a, bit. I got Brett, my buddy Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a um, there's been Bass Live the two events and the last two events, and it's every 
person with their head down. <laughs> I'm talking about like even in the spawn tournaments, dude. Yeah. Even the spawn tournaments mm-hmm. are, are won that way. Yeah. Which it's gonna hurt the resource yeah. eventually, and everyone's watching these tournaments and co- and seeing what they're and, doing and, and copying. If they see whoever catch a fish on a bed looking at a screen, they're gonna go try to do it, and then it's just gonna be yeah. I right. think personally. Allow it in half. Right. Don't allow it in yeah. half. I, I have. Um, That's you can't just ban it. That's right. I mean, we're not in too Russia too strong. Or before Cuba, you, I mean, <laughs> before you pivot from that FFS conversation, I have like some, and I don't know that you can talk with this because you know, if you want to talk about it, you can, but I don't think you're supposed to. Um, I wanted to ask you what makes because um, there's three competing companies um, that make forward facing sonar. And what two of them have obviously went a lot further than one of them. What, and I never got to experience that technology in tournaments because um, Hummingbird, I was with them when I was in the opens, I fished until 21 and they didn't come out with the technology until I was, I was out. I had called it quits. So I don't, I only know what I talk to people about. What has made, what makes forward facing sonar so deadly like what does live scope have that hummingbird doesn't have like what's going on that because i know you can see it in real time but what are the details of what's what makes the hummingbirds pretty much you're looking at blobs first generation garmin um the lawrence i can pick out fish right off the bottom right fish that used to just go carolina rig or texas rig i can see them down there the biggest stringer ever caught was fish that no one else would have seen unless you're probably running a Lowrance, right? The Garmin, I think you might be able to see into brush a little bit better. Yeah, mm-hmm. I heard their latest the uh, 34 or whatever is Yeah, is they really they all good. have their pros and cons. Yeah. Right. So, <clears throat> what but, are you but what are you seeing like I've only seen hummingbird, right? So, what are you seeing when you talk about separation? Like what are you you don't have to go give away. What do you away. mean separation? Like who's best or who's no, fr- from the bottom? Like <clears throat> when you're looking at your unit. I can tell you right now, the guys that I followed <clears throat> that ran Hummingbird that used to be doing good, yourself included, are not doing good because they're tied with these companies or this mm-hmm. com- particular company that's just not as good. Yeah. Well, so what are they, they see when you look at that screen? What aren't those guys able to see that you can see with the other units? <clears throat> well, I can tell you how big a fish is 90 feet in front of me. Mm-hmm. My biggest thing is fish ID. That is a huge, huge, huge thing. I can because see. Because the lake that you guide on, lots and lots and lots of carp. Tons of carp. You know how many carp I've been cast at, or, you know, guys cast at? Like someone that just doesn't know. Even a guy with Lorenz garment, whatever, whatever it is. Like ha- knowing the behavior of what a carp does, the angle of his mouth, the angle of his tail versus a bass the angle of his mouth his tail how fast he's swimming so you can't that's that's the juice right there so you can't see that with hummingbird live but you can see it with the other two you can definitely see it with lawrence i don't know about the new garmin 34 i'm sure you can right um i i can tell you species just from looking at the screen and i can tell you species from spending thousands of hours yeah and how the fish is acting. that's where that that's skill comes separate. in that's where that skill comes yeah in. that's separate I, that's not something we could see through the lens of bass live you yeah know? no and that there's a kid fishing the crappie trail now that's dominating everything what's his name hayden hayden he's catching he's winning every literally he's won like a couple hundred grand to hayden fishing. is such like a m- millennial name he <laughs> refuses to show the screen on any video, anything. Really? Because Which, he's again, dialed something he in. He might have something figured out, might not, but he's not. All these other people are showing their screens, you know? Right. And they got cameras they're showing, well, but he's not. So how is that, like, yeah, fair yeah. to everyone? Right, so, like, when you, like, if someone's uh, bed fishing, you get to physically see how they work the rod, right? And And the little things, they can't hide those from the camera. But if you're... You're using something, you got something, you know, very detailed you're doing that involves your screen and no one can see it and you're not saying it, then there's no learning experience whatsoever, right? I think Bass should allow Garmin, Lawrence, Hummingbird, them all. A thousand percent. That's to match the screen. That's, I think, what the problem. Bass had the technology. They figured it out this year, right? And they sold it, from what I understand, to Johnson Outdoors. Good for them. But their technology, I guess, was behind. So 
the majority of their anglers weren't in the top 10 this this year. So the only time you saw it was Gussie in the classic. I think Brandon made like um, Santi Cooper, but then no one else was top 10ing. So all all the the pros about being able to show the screen that the whole world was going to get to experience. And that's all speculation from Spe- a fan right there. Yeah. That's speculation from a, a viewer. Like, so right. you don't get to see it. But if if they would have just, instead of sold the spot to one company and allowed all three companies to partake, we probably wouldn't be as deep in this conversation from a mm-hmm. fan standpoint. And no matter what BASS, MLF, any of those guys do, the consumer's still going to buy it because it's great. They, right. Them banning it or them whatever isn't going to hurt the outside sales at all. Right. People know what it is. No, and they're right. going to continue. They're going to use oh, yeah, it. We're that far yeah. into it. And, sure. and some people are going to use it more than others, and some are still going to fish shallow and use it. It's always going to be used to the end of time. But that definitely, I, I saw that, and I was like, man, if anything, this is hurting Johnson Outdoors from people seeing this. Because right. this isn't good. Gussie could have done what he was doing with 2D, no, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Out there in that yep. open water fishing those schools. Yep. Right. 100% 2D. Just follow him around. You like Gussie. Gussie's a good dude. He's a really I, good I dude. I did watch that, yeah. that tournament. He's cool as hell. Um, and, you know, that horse that I talked about 45 minutes ago, we killed it again. Uh, I, I want to transition here um, because you're a hell of a fisherman. You catch a lot of big bass. Um, you're very well known in the Midwest, both on the crappie side and the bass side. You're getting a lot of eyeballs on your Facebook lives, uh, your Instagrams, your YouTube is like going off and that's the day and age, right? Um, you went to ICAST earlier this year. What are your takeaways from, I'm going to call you a professional bass fisherman because that's, you're an, in, I hate the word influencer, but you influence sales, whether it's your is it the panorama? Is that mm-hmm. what that thing? Whether it's a panorama swim bait, which is a no boot tail, just it looks like a gizzard shad, like dead on, caught a lot of big fish on it. Um, you know, what was your takeaway from ICAST? Or, you know, and the young guys that who are watching right now, we're going to go speak at, at Southwest Ford a little bit later today, speak to a bunch of high school anglers who watch your career, who watch my career. What can they expect after they catch a couple of 14 pounders on YouTube or they make their way through the opens or collegiate series? What can they expect as a, you know, up and coming angler when he goes to a place like ICAST thinking he's going to get, you know, deals based on the fish they catch and the influence they project out there? I mean, it's all about views and how many people you reach. And it was weird being at ICAST because I was treated like (laughs) a nobody. Isn't that crazy? I'm not a pro. I don't have a jersey. But your numbers are higher than most of the guys on that floor. I mean, I'll I'll reach 40 million people this year. Yeah. You know, that's you could add a lot of those guys on tour together and they don't reach that. Yeah. So it's different. Um, it's super competitive. But man, ICAST was just weird. I, I don't yeah. think I'll go back. Yeah. I mean, they won't even look at me. It lets you know like how uh, how little money there is in our little sport. Like we've been ranting about Ford Face and Summer for 45 minutes, not ranting, but talking about Ford Face and Summer for 45 minutes in the grand scheme of things. Like bass fishing is so small, and like you know, the marketing dollars to Josh Jones, to Chris Aldane, to Kevin Van Dam, like it is so small. It is small, so small. So, like I remember you calling me or texting me, you're like, "What? Like what is this play? Like what is ICAST? I mean, they. I think a lot of the pros see me as a threat. I'm just a social. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, and a lot of them might be slightly jealous. Yeah, because I get to go home. I what I fish three, four months a year, and then I. What have I been doing the last three months? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm about to go fishing up north yeah. for a whole month and deer hunt for two months. I mean, it's amazing. But it's just, man, in everything that I have that I provided for my family is because obviously the partnerships I built mm-hmm. and the friendships I built mm-hmm. that came from Ford Face and Sonar. Yeah. So. I, I, do, I don't want to seem negative towards it. I love it. But when we're talking tournament fishing, tournament anglers, professional tournament anglers, you have to kind of look at it like steroids were in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, baseball. baseball. Yeah. You Mark have McGuire. to kind of look at it like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would never be where I'm at without it. I yeah. wouldn't have two 15-pounders and eight more over 13 without it. 
I probably wouldn't have won. But yes. it's definitely a major, major advantage, and it's definitely a major advantage for younger anglers. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, Bass Live uh, on FS1, Bassmaster.com, I mean, it's arguably like the best platform to consume fishing content, right? Outside of your YouTube videos and other things like that. But, you know, as an organization, in my opinion, like stepping out of that bass fishing lane and being a little more dynamic. And, you know, they did it with the, I forget the top 150s or whatever they call them, where they have different holes, right? That's a very dynamic uh, kind of way to fish tournaments. And there's a lot of, there's, there's more rules implemented. You only can fish this hole A at, at this point hole B, then you move over and then you move, move over. I think what you're saying about four tournaments with, four tournaments without, or I was talking earlier this, this week about a power hour where you only could use it for two hours out of the day or whatever it is, it would take an organization to step out of that ordinary tournament fishing mold and trying something new. Look what happened the last time an organization tried something new. Of course, that's with COVID and thing and it's split and blah, 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 but like it, it didn't turn out very good. So at what point do we step out of that fishing lane and deliver what the fans really want to see? Something dynamic, something different, like those holes they used to do back in the day. I mean, I'm a fan. I'm not a professional angler on yeah. tour. I can tell you right now, the people winning are winning because they're good at looking yeah. at a screen, screen, not because they're naturally a good fisherman. And, you know, you, you've got the 10 years of experience with it, and you're, you're the guy. Like, you're the guy who really showed it off and – now the rest of the industry is really starting to catch up and and you know that coming from you what you just said coming from a guy with experience i feel like old jim bob or even the 75 year old guy is realizing that exact same thing which you realized years and years ago so i think all this is coming to a head i think there's a lot of uh tempers that are flared especially after we're coming off three tournaments that that it, it absolutely dominated um so yeah the ball is definitely in their court and we will see so me if i went and fished them i would probably do really well mm -hmm. honestly yep not even during the spawn horn. tournaments and i would do really well fall alabama or whatever yeah but if you took that away <laughs> i would not do really well and i'll admit that <laughs> You'd right come in with crappie <laughs> so that is like i'm admitting that it's a huge advantage yeah and at some point i want to see it in half the events yeah i want to see who's good with it and who's good without it and see who went, who yeah. angler of the year. I think that's fair, but how would you do that in the open? That's the thing. That that's the pro and, and then you could argue, well, if they could use it in the opens full time or and they're college. qualifying for the classic, yeah. how is that fair? Only to all allow classic it in half guys? the opens. Yeah, it's very it's very very tricky. Just allow it in half the opens. I would love to walk into the Bassmaster um, headquarters in Birmingham, Alabama, and see the meeting room with the whiteboard on the back and all these lines and circles of what's going the forward facing sonar well, conversation. Okay, so think about like even like bass is a they made their money being a media company even though it was like um not digital but whatever you call it print and so think about like the lack of how-to videos and stuff that they're gonna get engagement on if there's only one way to fish right yeah if people i mean honestly like that has to hit them too but then <clears throat> i'm sure the your sales guys don't want to lose the money from the electronics companies, but it's like there's a much bigger picture here. I don't think they're going to lose viewers. They'll gain viewers if they allow Garmin, Lawrence, Hummingbird to all show their screens yeah, evenly, link them up. Everyone gets to see which is the best. Right. They can make their own decision. Mm -hmm. People are going to be learning while watching. Mm -hmm. That's but, why I have such a huge following because people learn. Yep. Right. They're going to be able to it's see this. It's a master class with you. Yeah. Right. They're going right. to be able to see this live from the pros, the best in the world. And then they're going to be able to see how they do it up shallow because there's a lot of lakes, Louisiana, Florida. You still got to fish shallow. Ford facing sonar is not going to always be a player. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think if they were to ask me, I've already said it five times. That's what I would do. So, yeah, that's good stuff. But I still, man, it's still great. I don't think it's ever going to get old using yeah. it. Trait's Trait, on her phone. I don't know if she's reading notes or she's texting, but I'm going to give you one more question because uh, we've got to be at Southwest I Ford here some, in a little bit. Yeah, I got, sorry, some business stuff's popping off in yeah. my phone that I can't ignore. So, yeah, it's really cool. Like, you know, we're involved with the high school programs and stuff. Uh, Gilchrist Automotive, they support. <clears throat> 
uh, the THSBA, right? Texas High School Bass Association. That's what that's what it is, right? There's upwards of what thousands of high school kids. The future of our sport, legit future of our sport. Um, it's it's strong here in Texas. High school fishing is strong in Texas. Texas, it's strong in Alabama, Georgia, all the southern states, and that really is the future of our sport. So. We get to go hang out with the kids a little bit later today, so <clears throat> I hope we can do this a lot more. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's gonna be cool. Yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna try and do it once a month if we're in town. Yeah, um, and rotate the dealerships that we go to because um, we're at Southwest Ford tonight, but Gilcrest Automotive owns like sixteen different dealerships all throughout Texas and Oklahoma. Oh, yep. yep, they got Lawton, Toyota, in Oklahoma. They they've got a Toyotas, um, GMCs, Chevys, Dodge Rams, uh, you name it. I they think own about it. every 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 model. American and, and, made, and then they've got a few. Um, I think they have a Honda or something random. What's really cool, like when I first when I first entered entered the scene, the fishing scene, like there was like literally one dealer in the country that understood fishermen and the demands of fishermen. Seventy five thousand miles on their truck. It's really cool to have a place like that in Dallas Fort Worth to go to. I had a guy from Canada reach out to me and say, hey, look, really? you know, yeah, I'm looking to buy a Tundra. And I was like, dude, call this guy. He'll hook you up. Yeah, it's different when they understand fishing and understand, like, the costs of be- traveling and all of that and want to be a part of it and actually, like, support it. They're, I think, the number one um, supporter of Texas high school fishing mm-hmm. this year. Um, so, yeah, if we – we're going to try and go around to different dealerships throughout Texas and Lawton, Oklahoma, so that um, instead of just – some high schoolers getting to talk to you guys. You all can talk to a much bigger um, audience in person. They can ask you anything. It's going to be straight Q&A where um, they ask the question, you answer it right then. No speeches, no boring things, exactly what they want to know. Boat captains are going to come <clears throat> because, you know, they do the heavy lifting. So And this can good. evolve into something else. Yeah. Like I was yeah. telling you, I did that first seminar. Yeah. Ford face and sonar, three, yeah. 350 people about crappie. You were nervous, weren't you? Dude, yeah. So like, nervous. So we can <laughs> we can do something like an actual seminar to not only high school kids, yeah. but to anyone that wants to come. Yep. Yeah. And I a mean, live stream. Have it a live stream too. That too. Yeah. I mean it yeah. it can and I'm in the process of actually like writing a book. Oh wow. I'm so busy though, I yeah. can't yeah. but I got so much stuff. Are like, you writing it or do you have a ghostwriter who's filtering? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm going to have a lot of deer stand time this year, and there I'm just going to jot down. I got a lot of secret stuff that people don't know. Good. You know, and it, I could tell people, like, we do a seminar at mm-hmm. wherever and talk about it like I did in the crappie, crappie university is yeah, what it was. That's cool. They already used Bass University twice in our industry, in the Bass side, so can't can't quite do that. But I always say, like I say, our, I said it earlier, our industry is so small um like take care like if you're a fishing consumer do you buy tackle yes do you buy line do you buy rods do you buy trucks do you buy boats yeah if if you're like involved in the fishing uh if you're a part of kind of the fishing economics spend within inside the industry because it takes care of everyone takes care of not only you know the guys who are sponsored by this product but in turn it takes care of yourself so if these outside companies are willing to invest in our little sport of bass fishing take care of those people right so. And I'm kind of the same way. I'm different. I'm not sponsored by Bass Pro, so I'm real big on local tackle shops. Yeah, sure. You know, when I got my start by Oh, yeah. Minos, yeah, you're an Oklahoma guy. Heck, yeah. Man, I had two or three little local tackle shops yep. that I stopped at constantly. Yep. And a couple of days ago, I stopped at one. It's no longer in business. It's my first time crop wow. fishing in a year, and I drove by, and they're gone. Mm. So it's a great family, but we didn't support them. And it's a small industry, like it you is said. Tiny. I mean, let's yeah. support the people within yep. it. To help them grow. Yep. And it helps you out in the long run. It really does. I will gladly pay a little more money to help yeah. help a local family or something, you yeah. know? Like, I don't even look at the money anymore. I've already racked up 80 grand on my credit card, so just Duh. keep adding to it. Welcome to professional bass yeah, fishing. Yes. Keep tallying it So up. with that, i got to ask you, I forget um, kind of the advice you gave us last time as we were parting ways, but do you have any new advice you could give young anglers or someone that spends 80,000 miles uh on the road and you know behind your dodge ram or whatever it is um do you have any parting advice for us <clears throat> film everything there you go one that's a good week, one i i don't know if i told you guys last time but one week changed my life at, at ivy when i caught a 13 and 15 and 20 i caught 22 double digits or 24 22 or 24 in one week 
How many views has that YouTube video got? I don't. I don't point? have a whole lot. Yeah, but it's a lot. It's a lot. I'm slow on the YouTube game. That's all right. But that's what I mean. Us too. Yeah. If I was filming everything, I would have a million subscribers. Why, I have some. Crazy... Why don't you hire someone? Because it costs more. Around. It costs more than the eighty thousand on have, that credit card. So yeah, I'm more it, like. It, it costs more, but you end up making more. Yeah. I didn't know I was coming here until what two days ago. Like, yeah. I, my schedule's crazy. Yeah. But you dropped everything to come out. And I'll hang tell out. my wife, "Hey, I'm going to North Carolina Wednesday or whatever." You know. Yeah. Like my buddy called me yesterday. Hey, you want to go to Costa Rica? I really thought about it, but I was like, no. Nope. It's that's why I haven't filmed much. But yeah, if I would have been, there's no telling where I'd be. And also, don't say anything stupid on social media. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do that's, that because it's all right? about social. Media. Used to, yeah, I used to, but I didn't know I'd be where I'm at now. Yeah, some social media guy. Yeah. I mean, I I went to Montana. I was taking pictures with people. That's Bismarck, awesome. North Dakota, in. Pier, South Dakota, and somewhere in the middle of Montana. How about that? People recognize me from social media. Yep. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know they had bass up there. So that's yep. good. You that's... know, and they're t- wanting pictures. I'm like, that's cool. So don't let, don't say anything online that might come back to bite you. Yeah. And I, every time I've talked to high school kids, I talked to a couple hundred, you know, a few months ago. I said, just don't say anything stupid. Yep. Because it will come back to bite you. And I pick at some companies, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine. That's all. Awesome. That's all in good. But time. hey, Donald Trump didn't get to be president from staying straight laced. Yeah. Right. People sure. resonated with yep. him. People loved him. This, yep. And that's why he got to be president. But And it also, you may or may not believe it, but I'm indifferent. But he might have lost the presidency from saying too much. Too much. Yeah. yeah. So there's a fine line between getting yeah. to where you need to be and yep. then shutting up. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. that's kind of where I'm at. That's good advice. So yeah, for all the young up and comers, film everything, film everything, but filter a little bit of it out. So there's a couple, two times this happened. No, three actually. Yeah. Two times I threw my A rig out there, set the hook, line broke. Followed the fish, retied another A rig on, followed the fish with my A rig hanging out its mouth, threw my A rig, hooked into the A rig in the fish's mouth. Wow. And the fish in. Twice that happened. That's Once, impressive. My buddy J Ray, we went to Dripping Springs in Oklahoma where I fish. He tied on this brand new, at the time it was a hog farmer. Yep. Perfect, beautiful looking A rig. First cast, he got a backlash and the, the A rig went flying 100 feet. And he's <laughs> pissed off. And, you know, he, just, he didn't even get a cast it and it's in the water. So I turned the trolling motor on high and I went to where I saw it land, the splash. And I went over there, and we were in about 20 foot of water. And there was a tree that came up nine feet. And that A-rig went down and hung in the top of that tree. So all I did was, he's back there pissed off. So I just got my pole and straight vertical, hooked onto his A-rig. Oh, and my it up gosh. And tossed it to him. Now, that Swear shows precision right there. So if I would have been just videoing those three times. Yeah. Because twice I hooked into the, fish, the A-rig that was in the fish's mouth. And then once I got my buddy's A ring back, I mean, that would have got millions of views. That's amazing. That's awesome. All right. That's good advice. We got to get to Southwest Ford. But before you go, uh, you're going to do a tour, a Western tour uh, over the next couple months here, perhaps. You don't have to say the names of the fishery, but if you follow Josh, um, I mean, you're going to be holding up a bunch of big, what, small mouth, some big, big large mouth. mouth. Um, and I know you've got like a little checklist of lakes because you do your research that you want to hit kind of along the way. You, don't tell us the names of the lakes, but geographically, wh- where will you be over the next Northwest, month? Northwest, okay. one of the lakes. That is, that's, yeah, that's... that's Almost you know, as far away from here as you can drive. I'm going to one lake that starts with an O. Okay. Going to one lake that starts with a D and going to one lake that starts with a uh, F. P? Wow. Oh, you're not going to P? <laughs> FP? No. I already went there. <laughs> I thought about it, though. But the only problem with that is it's 22 miles of dirt road. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks sucks. very... I've looked at it on satellite. I'm like, well... The first time I... There. my Before my boat was ever in the water, I already drove down 28 miles of gravel to get there. <laughs> just like... All right, dude. I had to drive with slow. that, yeah, take it to the guys hey, at Gilcrest. Also, They'll get you detailed up. If the U.S. Open goes back to Lake Mead, which they said it would, yeah. yep. I'm going to fish it. Heck yeah. And I'm really we'll intrigued by Lake Mead, Lake Mead, yep. because. Okay, I'm look, not in, gonna... look in that camera and tell Billy. Just look at it in the <laughs> eyes and tell whatever you're going to say about Mead. Go. To about Billy. Mead? Yeah, Billy, right there. So, 
I'm intrigued by Lake Mead because I'm not going to use sonar. Yeah. It's That's kind awesome. of a running power style. fishing. It is. So it's a power fishing lake. It's a power fishing lake. Patterns. One of my really good friends won it and finished second three times. Wow. So he's like, dude, you got what it takes. Go do it. I think you can win it. And I was like, yeah, okay. I don't want to go to Mojave because that's just a shootout. Yeah. And it's definitely going to be a shootout this year. Are you fishing it? We'll be there. It's going to be a shootout. All right. We got to get to the dealership. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Josh, thank you again for showing up uh, and and being a repeat offender here on the Bilge Podcast. Yeah. Until next time. Thank you, guys. Bye.